Well, hello gang. We've got the tools out next to the bike, which can only mean one thing. It's time to fix something or upgrade something. In this case, it's a little of both. The front motor mount seems to be a little bit worn. And there is a recommendation to change out the front motor mount uh, on these touring bikes every so many thousand miles. I'll see if I can post that into, in the description as far as how many. But what we're looking at is right down in here. There's the original. This bike has about 47,000 miles on it. And I noticed it's uh, starting to shake a lot. I see a crack right here along the bottom ridge. At least I believe it is. Either that or it's, or it's where a washer might be. So we're going to take that one out and put in this Drag Specialties urethane front motor mount and from what I've seen and read on the forums and seen in the videos uh, a lot of people believe the urethane motor mounts outlast and outperform the rubber ones so we're gonna give that a try and see what happens see if it smooths the bike up any uh, I'm pretty sure I'm overdue so let's get the old one out and then I'll try a couple other little tricks that I've uh, seen also on the internet about pulling the motor forward with the motor mount loose and then clamping it down so uh, it'll pull the front of the motor towards the front of the bike and what that'll do is hopefully cause it to tighten up the rear transmission mounts which are also connected to the swing arm axle so it's an interesting setup thanks a lot Harley Davidson and let's see what happens Okay, can you see in here? There's the motor mount. Got the voltage regular, regulator up out of the way and unclipping these clips. It's, they, uh, they snap together, but it's easier if you slide them to one side. Twist them to one side and they'll slide out of the slot easier. And I'm, I'm imagining once the wires go back in, just, put, just press it and they'll clip back together. But if you slide them to one side, or the other same thing on this one they will release much easier so that's the good news they both released actually this one doesn't have a clip does it? it's just just a standalone clip but I'm gonna take out this bolt this bolt and the main center bolt to get this motor mount out probably have to jack the motor up a little bit it's extremely dirty in here every time uh, the oil filter gets changed the oil runs down in here so maybe I'll get some cleaner and squirt some uh, cleaner on there. Clean it up a little bit without making too much of a mess. We'll see how that goes. But that's how far we've gotten so far. Okay, we've got the main bolt out. It's a pretty thick washer up top here. Main bolt itself. This thick washer goes on the bottom. And then this nut up against that. And this is an 11 sixteenths nut. This is a 9 sixteenths head bolt. So the main bolt is out. And you can see how big of a hole there is here for adjustability and just how far the motor can move back and forth in its mount. So we'll see if that helps us out with anything in just a little bit. Right now, these feel like they have a nut on the bottom of them, these two bolts. So we'll take those out. Uh, this is called the dog bone. This centers the motor for the alignment. And anything I've seen says leave that alone. Don't even loosen any of the bolts. Uh, but the bolts behind it, in the back here, one there, one over here, we can loosen those. And what will happen there is that will loosen this black main plate here enough so that if we need more play in it to lift it up, and get the old motor mount out and the new one in that we can loosen up those bolts and I see they have their own nuts on the bottom to be aware of to try to get a wrench on that looks like it might be a little fun but we'll see so that's where we're at now at this stage all right we've got one bolt out same thing as the main bolt 11 16 bottom nut 9 16 head bolt with a washer on the top no washer on the bottom, just the nut itself is used as 
as the washer. So that side is out. Now we'll take this side out. Okay, got both of these back bolts loose, and boy, breaking them loose. They're both 9 16 the bolt head and the nut. Took a bit of a struggle. They're on pretty, uh, pretty good. They need to be broke free. So they finally did break free. I loosened them up a little bit, but now I'm going to use a uh, small car jack underneath and jack the motor up a little bit, take the weight off it, see how far I can lift it up before the bike begins to move or anything like that. And uh, probably doesn't have to move up very much. At least that's what I'm hoping to get the old motor mount out. Okay, I've got the car jack under there, underneath the crankcase of the motor. And I've lifted it up, as you can see, there is now a gap here. Uh, oh, and here we go. The old motor mounts is loose. It doesn't look like it's quite got enough free play to take it out yet. Almost. So I'm going to loosen this plate a little bit more. You can see it move. And notice that the dog bone adjustment is attached. The centering adjustment rod is attached to this plate. So I'll loosen those bolts just a little bit more. Give me just a little bit more wiggle room and we'll get this out. Okay, we got it out. As you can see here, it says top. So this is the flat with a cone shaped side. So this one, even though it doesn't say top, has a flat area with a cone shaped side as well. And if we flip them both over, you can see they're a little bit concave on the bottom. This is the new one, here's the old one. And the old one, it's pretty squishy. It's not cracked as bad as I thought it would be, but the new one is urethane and squeezing the new one, as you can see there's some paint on it and it's bubbling. It was spray painted black obviously, but it has more, ugh more resistance to it. So I'm going to go ahead and drop it in and we'll see what happens from here. Okay, it dropped in just fine. I had to use a screwdriver to kind of uh, make a ramp to slide the old one out. I didn't need to use a screwdriver to get the new one in. But I also wanted to note that these side holes that the engine mount bolts through are quite wide as well not the uh, the rubber mount itself the flange on that the holes are pretty small pretty uh, uniform but the s ones in the frame are pretty wide meaning that you can adjust this side to side and what I saw in a video and I'll probably post a link to it in the description is to tighten up these plate bolts drop the center bolt in and just put the nut on same thing with these side bolts drop them through put the nut on and start the motor up and let it run for a little bit to let things shake and settle on their own into where they comfortably want to be and once they settle um, i'm going to try another uh, idea with a ratchet strap around my highway bars to pull the motor from the bottom or the base of the rear cylinder, pull the motor forward so that it pulls against the rear uh, swing arm axle. And it's explained in the video what this does. The gentleman in the video pushed on the rear tire while videotaping the bushings inside the uh, axle shaft for the swing arm and the whole thing lurched forward. There was that much play in it, about an eighth of an inch or so. But he was saying that that's where the bike wants to be. It's most stable and comfortable is with that pushed up against the inner part of the frame. And once that's done, then the front bolt can be tightened up to hold the motor in this forward leaning or forward pulling position. So I'm going to try that and see what kind of results I get. Okay, a little progress update. I've got these top bolts absolutely tight. In fact, I had to use the lock the wrenches together method 
to give me a little extra leverage. Got to be careful around the fender paint though. Luckily I didn't scratch it, but uh, there were some close calls. So those are absolutely tight now, which hold this, this uh, plate that the dog bone centering adjustment is attached to, absolutely tight. The center bolt, as you can see, it's loose. I've still got the motor on the jack. I've put the center bolt through and put the nut on the bottom along with the large flat washer, exactly how it came off the bike. I've got the side mounting bolts also through with their nuts on the bottom. So everything is loose and I'm gonna just kind of uh, eyeball it to the center for now and gently lower the bike down onto it. Okay, I've taken out the jack. The full weight of the motor is now resting on this front motor mount. It's solid here. The bolts, however, are still loose. Still have a, a bit of play in them, as you can see. Okay, so what I'm gonna try now is running a ratchet strap to my highway bars and gently tighten them enough to pull the motor and transmission forward against the swing arm axle bolt that goes all the way through and use the front motor mount to hold it in this forward position so it's it's kind of like in a triangle where everything has tension on it and it's stable it's not floating around loose okay and this is based on a video I saw which uh, looked like it was a good idea let's find out okay I've gone around the bike with the ratchet strap to the other highway bar comes out on this side loops around the hook I've put tension on it it pulled the transmission forward I have also was careful around this oil sensor okay goes right around the base of the cylinders not a lot of tension just a bit and it actually did pull I was watching the transmission pull ahead about maybe an eighth of an inch maybe a little bit more and you can hear the mounts in here uh, squishing up a bit so it did pull the head a little bit without putting a whole lot of strength on it just a little bit so now I'm gonna try to start the bike up let it shake around for a bit and see where these bolts settle shut it off and go ahead and tighten them up Okay, and it looks like that's where it wants to be. So I'm gonna go ahead and tighten it up right there. Okay, just another side note. I didn't like the way this nut was going back onto the main bolt, so I took it back out. Uh, the other two bolts on the sides, I had to use socket and wrench to uh, bring them up snug. I couldn't do it by finger, in other words, finger tight. And so I, I trust that they will not back out, plus I've tightened them up really tight. Okay, and I'll check for the uh, foot-pounds on that. But this one, I could tighten up the nut, snug it up all the way by hand until it, it flattened out. And when I, when I snugged it with a wrench and then loosened it again, I could still loosen it with my fingers. So I put some blue Loctite on here to keep it from undoing itself. And I'll lose all this stuff on the road somewhere. And then the motor will probably be flopping around like crazy because there's nothing holding it down. So blue Loctite, let's give that a shot. Okay, got the blue Loctite on there. Snugged it up good. As you can see, the bolt, the... Uh, the, the mount here has come ahead a little bit. I can actually see a little bit of a gap next to the washer itself. So I've snugged it right up tight. And let's see if that holds the motor to the front against the pivots on the swing arm. And we'll release the ratchet strap and start it up and give it a look and see what it looks like. Okay, the side bolts are torqued. Center bolt is tight. Of course, these back here tightened up as well. Never did touch the dog bone itself. 
and it seems to be a fully functional urethane motor mount. It has solved some of the shaking issue. I can see a difference already in the motor. So I guess it's time to take it for a ride and see how it feels on the road. And just in case you thought I forgot the voltage regulator, I didn't. I'm gonna put that back on first and then take it for a ride, okay? You're right, put that on first, okay. Okay, so what's the verdict? I think the bike runs uh, maybe a little less vibration, but maybe not. It it's, feels like it's more solid. It doesn't feel like it vibrates as uh, wildly as it did before. It doesn't seem to hop as much, but it still has a bit of vibration that can be felt in the bike. Not so much in the handlebars, especially at idle, but it's, uh, it definitely has more of a solid feel. This urethane motor mount, $20 including shipping and not made in the USA, but maybe it uh, will break in a little softer as time goes by, but for right now, it uh, feels different. Whether it's better than the old one or not, um, I, didn't, I did notice that I didn't feel as much vibration slowing the bike down right around 40 miles per hour and a little less uh, there was an awful vibration that would come up through the foot uh, uh, rest over here the floorboard and that's gone away so I think that mount really was worn out and the urethane one has more of a sturdier feel to it also I think that maybe uh, pulling the motor and transmission ahead in the bike using the rear cylinder with a ratchet strap to the highway bar uh, brought about what I guess I could call a, a triangle of stability. So the, the rear is pulled against the swing arm axle shaft which is right behind here and it's the front of the triangle is of course the front motor mount so that as as that slid ahead between an eighth of an inch and a quarter of an inch um, and now it's it's holding this this triangle of firmness or sturdiness so a stability triangle I guess we'll call it okay so here's a crude drawing of this stability triangle of course we have this side and one on the other side uh, this smaller circle is the rubber uh, bushing that the transmission is mounted to inside this hollow tube or opening that the axle shaft goes through. In fact, there would be uh, a little bolt right here, okay, with a nut. So by pulling the transmission forward to the front of the bike, where the front motor mount is, it's pulling this bushing more securely into the rounded part of this cup. So it's, it's holding it there more firm than if it were back here slopping around. So I hope that makes sense. So you got on this side and then on the other side of the bike, same thing, it's up against the front part of that cup and what's holding it there now is the front motor mount hold, keeping it from, from sliding back this way. So it's got tension going that way, it's got tension going this way, and it's doing the same thing on the other side. So we've got a triangle of tension or stability right here is what I believe is going on inside the bike. So it, uh, it's giving it a more firmer feel for one thing, but I'm hoping that it also gives the bike the swing arm 
uh, a, a bit more of a, a stability where the transmission isn't rattling around on the axle bolt for the swing arm as much or influencing it if it is as much. So that's what I believe happened. Whether that's good or not, comment away. And we'll see what we come up with for ideas on why that might or might not work or why it might or might not be better for the bike. But, hey, if you can get a hold of a urethane motor mount and replace that rubber one, I guess at this point I would have to say I recommend it. It uh, seems to be more solid and uh, it is dulling a lot of the vibration so the motor is not swinging as, as much as it was by the, by the least.